All right, let's try this. Oh my gosh. Oh shit. <laughs> this is not supposed to happen. It'll be fine. Everything will be fine. Oh, we're doomed. Hey guys, how are you all doing? Really? That's just great. You know, I'm not actually doing so great today. For one, I'm freezing my baguettes off in the lair. It's really cold, hence the sweatshirt. And two, one of my favorite computers is not turning on anymore. So what's happening? Well, I press the power button, nothing works. However, sometimes it does turn on after it's plugged in for an extended period of time, but the screen is having some flickering issues. I'm not sure what the technical term is, but I think it's like degaussing itself. Like every time something moves on the screen, it like flickers and like turns off and then on. It goes like, ding, 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 ding. you know, it's kind of like I'm turning it off and on very rapidly. So I don't know who to blame. I don't know if it's a power supply issue. I don't know if it's a logic board issue. However, we have some luck. So when I was doing the Macintosh TV tech video logs, I explained that I got a spare Mystic board from the seller. The Mystic board was essentially a Macintosh Color Classic logic board that was souped up. So this has a faster processor, more RAM, more video capabilities, and this one even has an ethernet card on it. Very nice. So I'm thinking if I put this board in here, we may be able to save this thing. And I also have the hard drive that came from the same donor computer as this board. For shits and giggles, let's see if this thing actually turns on. I've had it plugged in for a while, let's see what happens. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, not working so well, let's see. Like, I can hear a little sound when I turn the power on, so power is getting in. But yeah, it just does not want to turn on. So, again, power supply, Logic board, I don't know, but let's take a look at the logic board inside this thing, see if we can find out any damage or leaks, because capacitors can be a bitch. Thankfully, this Mac was made in the good old days where you could just literally take a logic board out of um, one Mac and put it in another. Like, Apple didn't care. You could just freaking, like, switch these things around like nobody's business. Yeah, can't really do that nowadays, can ya? Okay, here's the board. Let's just carefully remove this. And out it comes. So upon examination of the board, there's a, a little bit of a corroding going on, it looks like. It's definitely not the worst I've seen, but there's a couple problem spots. Uh, again, I'm not really an expert on this stuff, but I can tell when something looks a little bit problematic. Next to the battery, it looks like we have some brown crap going on there. But yeah, it's definitely not the worst I've seen. It looks pretty clean compared to some other terrifying logic board photos that I have looked at. On the back side, though, there definitely, there definitely looks like there's more um, problem spots. There's a lot of white stuff going on here. I don't work with this stuff too often, so uh, don't know if that's a very technical term, but yeah, that doesn't look too good. Other than that, it's okay, but yeah, I think it's time we try a different board, so what do you say? Let's try doing a motherboard swap or a Logic board swap, let's try. All right, so I'm gonna take the Color Classic board out of the way. I'll just set you right there, nice and comfy-like. And we'll insert the rather dusty Mystic board, but I'm not gonna bother cleaning it right now. I don't wanna touch something and have it explode. Well, with a little more jiggling, I actually got it to fit in. Don't turn that into a dirty joke, please. Okay, let's listen for the snap. I don't think that was it. There we go. It's not really a snap, it's more like a shunk. That feels secure. Okay, let's put the back back on. That ethernet card is gonna get in the way for now. Shit. Uh -huh. Wonder if I can just take this off. Ooh, probably not. You're gonna be a little bitch. Ah! Mother. Well, we got that taken apart. I don't know if that's gonna help at all, but let's see. Oh, this don't, what the shit? You know what? Yeah. Yeah, that's not gonna that's not gonna work. The this this board change is not made for that back at all. Alright, well, we'll just uh, let it run with the back off for now. By the way, I thought it was fitting that I'm wearing the old Macintosh face for the <laughs> experiment today. 
Oh, I've been thinking of opening up some Crazy Ken slash Computer Clan merchandise stores recently. Maybe I'll do that. Anyway, there's a couple outstanding variables with this. If it boots up, the system software may totally be incompatible. Again, I have the hard disk that was supplied to me with the Mystic logic board. So if we have to swap the hard drive, I guess that'll be next. Let's get power plugged in. Keyboard, and let's turn on power. I mean, the power supply unit. And um, let's try booting her up. Hey, I hear noise. So the fan is on, the hard drive is spinning. Oh, oh, what the, f uh, okay. This is different, but this is still better than what we had before. <laughs> uh, let's see what's up. There is not enough memory to load all of your extensions. Hmm, I've never seen that before. Okay, what I've also never seen before is the way the screen looks. That freaks me out a little bit. At least it's not flickering like before. Before it would like keep being all wiggly and stuff, but now it's just distorted. I have no clue why. All right, I'm gonna shut this down quickly and throw in a mouse so I can actually control this thing. Well, let's open up Photoshop, I guess. <laughs> what? Some of it is opening graphics, like on one side of the screen, and then there's like this dark void, and then there's more of the screen. <laughs> oh, I really don't know what's happening. <laughs> this is so weird. Oh my gosh. Everything has like a freaking hourglass figure. Like, it's like wobbly windows and comp has just got stuck. It looks like it renders stuff a lot faster. Like, I'm not kidding, like, just painting the Apple menu took a little bit of time with the original board. This just does it. Yeah, it feels speedier, and I'm not just saying that. It really does feel speedier. That's kind of a half win right there. A little bit of a stalemate. So I'm gonna hit the Google machine up, see if anyone else has had this problem. Uh, Colin Worth, who I collaborated on Vintage Apple Vault, I think he has a Mystic board, or he was at least working on one at one time. I know he has a Color Classic. I could also contact the seller that sold me the Macintosh TV as well as the Mystic board and see if he has had a similar issue too. So I got a couple people I can ask and the almighty Google machine. I've been thinking, I, I heard there was a way to crank the system resolution to 640 by 480 with these upgrades. And I wonder if that's what's happening because everything looks a little bit smaller too. So I think something with the motherboard or logic board is forcing the resolution too high, which again is technically possible. I've seen people do it with these upgrades, or at least I've heard rumors, but yeah, it's clearly not working on here. So I think something is missing, which will actually let me take advantage of the resolution. I need a freaking mouse pad. Why don't I just get one? But yeah, I think that's all it is. I think it's just the, like, the resolution is too high and it can't handle it. Okay, so I did some poking around the internet and it turns out the main culprit for the resolution issue is the VGA hack on the motherboard. Now, the hack, I don't know why it's not working, but right now it's causing more problems than it is solving. So, there's a couple options. One, I can swap resistors on the logic board. No, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> uh, two, we can use resource edit or res edit to modify the system file, or whatever file we really need to edit, and try to get the screen resolution of the Color Classic back to normal. So, I have a CD here, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I need to get the resource editor program on the Color Classic, or technically on an external bootable drive for the Color Classic so I can overwrite the system file. And I don't have a super convenient way to transfer stuff to it other than burning CDs. And I can't just burn a CD with a modern Mac because, well, at least with the built-in software because I can't make a Mac OS standard disk image. So that is why I busted out my Leopard PowerBook and we'll make a disk image and have some fun together, hurrah. Oh boy, this is really not gonna work, is it? Make a new disk image, new blank disk image. So now I can do this, burn that. Okay, so uh, I feel like I should probably put something else on this CD, but I really don't know what else to put on here. I I'm kind of just wasting it. I'm writing 1.8 megabytes of files and yeah, just wasting the other like 600 or so. Just feels a little wasteful, but I have a hundred of them. It'll be fine. Everything will be fine.
Oh, we're doomed. Okay, so to just keep adding to the plethora of problems, the CD burned, which is great, but now the power book went into sleep mode, and for some reason it will not wake up from sleep mode, so I can't actually check the data on the disk, so I'm gonna have to hard shut it down and reboot. Silly power, oh man, even holding down the power button isn't turning it off. Are you serious, dude? Wow, this, this guy, this guy is just being so uncooperative. What is his deal? All right, just gonna yank the power. Sorry, anonymous silver stranger, it was you or me. Where's the port? There it is. <laughs> I'm gonna need to drink some port after this. There's disk image, and here's our shit. All right. Power book, you have done your duty. All right, let's move back to the 68K stuff. Now, we just need a way to, oh, crotch shot, that's great. We just need a way to get this thing booted up externally if we're gonna be editing system files. I believe that would be the safest and most permission-friendly way to do that. And I need something to transfer the data off the CD. There's no built-in CD-ROM drive. So, we're gonna use some stuff from some previous episodes. Item number one, a Club Mac external hard disk drive. This will run over SCSI. I believe System 7.5 is on here, so it should be bootable. And on the back, we have CN50 SCSI connections, so we can daisy chain. This little guy, an Apple CD300 external SCSI CD-ROM drive. Caddy loading. I already have the Terminator installed on the back of this thing, so I'll just daisy chain it now with the CN50 cable. With my favorite satisfying clicking sound, when you snap that in. Definitely don't need to do that nowadays, but it's fun. It's nice. It's, it's the little things. You know, I'm gonna have to set you to the side because you're just too freaking big. So one thing I didn't notice earlier, a viewer actually pointed this out to me, is that the label on the little slot here, the little flap, changes when you have a caddy inserted. So right now it says CD caddy, but when a disc actually goes in there, it says caddy loaded. I seriously have never noticed that. <laughs> so the things I learned from you awesome techies, right? So I also need the CN50 to DB25 cable. CN50 on the back here. And then we'll screw in the, 20, the DB25 to the Color Classic. Sorry about all the crotch shot. Oh, I'm also not used to wearing a sweatshirt, but I'm freezing my baguettes off. So, fresh little caddy. Throw a CD in there, and we're good to go from a hardware level. Now we just need to, oh, you know, we should probably hook a keyboard up to the Color Classic so we can actually operate stuff. Okay, let's flip things on and pray that they work. Les voila. Now, I won't be surprised if I screwed something up royally, so if this doesn't work, let's not be surprised. Let's be surprised if it does work. Okay, let's turn this on first, the CD300. And yes, it does say CD Caddy, but once I load it up, it now says Caddy Loaded. Now this part, I don't know if I'm just overthinking it, but sometimes it's tricky. If I turn this on too soon, sometimes the computer won't recognize it. Let's try booting them up around the same time. I know there's a keyboard shortcut you're supposed to press. I always forget what it is. It's like something. <laughs> All right, let's try this. Oh my gosh. See, I'm still going off the assumption that the VGA hack is what's effing this up, but what's weird is all of this, like, extra light coming through. I don't know if the hack is causing that or if it's some other electrical problem, but I hope it's just the hack causing that problem. System 7. So that's the external disk. That's good. Start up disk control panel. Okay, it registers both the internal Macintosh HD and our SCSI System 7, so that's Gucci. Let's set that as our startup disk. Shut down and power back up. Sounds like the SCSI, external SCSI disk is cranking away. That's a good sign. However, what's not a good sign is now nothing is showing up. And it sounds like no hard drive is doing anything. You know, it's probably not compatible. This external drive, I bet, can't boot. And it's giving us an error message saying it can't boot, but we can't get the picture up, so... We don't know that it can't boot. Unless... Oh, I just did something. I just hit enter, and now stuff is happening. But I can't see any of it. And it sounds like it loaded. I really don't want to have to hard shut all this down, but let's see. I'm going to assume I'm booted into the desktop. So hypothetically, I should be able to press the power button and then press enter to do a regular safe shutdown. Wow, that was lucky. Whew, yeah, you got to know how to pilot blind, you know? You never know when your freaking instruments are just going to go down. You just got to fly the plane. I feel like I'm kind of like that right now, except this is definitely not as deadly of a situation. It's just a disappointing situation.
We're gonna start back up on the normal hard drive, the internal one, make sure the startup disk is set back to that, and then reboot and try, just try to see what we can do without booting externally. Oh, hang on, it's doing something. I can hear it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I'm trying to start up normally now. I still don't have video. The resolution is what's causing a lot of the, the speed bumps here. It's not so much of a speed bump, it's more like the edge of a cliff. That's kind of where we are right now. What did I do? I'm just gonna call the screen dead. I'm pretty sure it's just dead. What I'm gonna try is I'm gonna put the other board back in it and see if I can get that to boot. Because again, if it sits for a while plugged in with the power turned on, sometimes miraculously I can get it to boot. If it boots, and the screen works, then we can likely safely assume the screen by itself is not malfunctioning. Maybe it's something with this particular board. However, if the computer does turn on with the other board in it, but the screen just does this, well then I guess we can assume the screen is busted. I don't know if I did anything to break it, but it was already acting funny as it is. And I'm not even talking about the resolution thing, I'm talking about the issue before that where it was just like flickering like crazy. So yeah, it might be broke. Well, that would suck. All right, well, that's gonna be an overnight thing because it, it usually takes hours before it's bootable again with that other board. So we'll see. Okay, so it's been about two and a half days since I last touched this computer. I've been letting it charge up for all of those days to see if I can get it to boot. Because again, sometimes that has worked for me in the past. And actually within that time frame. My beige mouse had to go somewhere else, so now I have the Macintosh TV black mouse with me. So that's kind of cool. It doesn't match the rest of the computer's beautiful color, but oh well. It's a black mouse, and it's awesome. All right, here we go. I'm gonna press the power button. Hope something happens. Three, two, one. What? Oh shit, it's turning on. Okay, so now the question is, will the screen turn on? Because I've been having problems with that. Oh, there it, oh, hello, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh shit, <laughs> this is not supposed to happen. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, hello, McFly, oh, it's red, oh, it's bleeding. Oh, that's, that's, oh. Um, it's like buzzing and hissing. I don't think I should really have this turned on. I'm gonna let it go for a little bit longer. Oh my gosh, that's that's not good. Holy shit. Is this thing gonna like explode? I, I'm gonna be over here if you need me. Shit, dude, that ain't right. This is way worse than it was before. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, when I said it was like flickering before, it was not this bad. This is way worse. It got worse ever since I attempted the motherboard swap. Um. You need to turn off. You need to shut down right now, sir. Oh. Oh, okay. All right, well. <laughs> uh, well, it turned on. That was cool. The screen turned on too, but it kind of only, it didn't really finish. It like half turned on and just kept like flick, flickering and spazzing out. Oh. Oh man, I think the, the frickin' screen is dead. Shit. Let me guess now, it's not gonna turn back on. Oh shit, it did. Oh, that was lucky. Um, yeah, I can I can hear it buzzing again. Yeah, this is not a good idea. I, I wanna give it one more try just to see what happens, but it seems like when there's less movement on the screen, it, it flickers less. Oh shit, that's, oh, it's broke. Oh, dang it. Welcome to Macintosh. Yes, I feel so welcome right now. Oh, uh, by the way, don't watch the screen too much if you have like seizure problems or something. <laughs> I should probably put a little disclaimer up right now. This is this is driving me crazy. I'm gonna let it boot up. I'm just gonna check it one more time and see if it, when it boots up, if it like stops doing this when there's no movement on the screen. But oh wow. Oh no, man, this really sucks. Oh yeah, it's f this is bad. All right. You need to turn off. <sighs> wow. Oh, this poor little computer. Curse. You just had to strike this guy, huh? You just had to strike him. He's... 
He's old. He's been through a lot. He's older than me. What is your motive? Why? Why do you have to strike him? Why make his final days so torturous? What? what what's happening? What? What? Where'd he go? Ken, can you hear me? Classy. I really am sorry about all this, but it's time that I go. What? Now? But I... I know people who can fix you. You can be fixed, it's fine. All of that is just a stall. This really is what's better for me. No, Classy, I had you since I was just a little kid. I, I remember taking you home the first day and I, I had to fix your hard drive. I remember doing that. You can't go now. It'll be better this way for both of us. But what about the, the good times we had? Those memories will always be in my heart drive. I had a wonderful time knowing you. You're free to use any computer you want. Computers faster than me. You're right. I'll use computers that will make you jealous. Oh. <sighs> well, I got a hold of the curse's phone number and I got in touch with him, asking what he possibly did to that poor old computer to f*** it up so bad. And he told me to go f*** myself. So, not gonna get anywhere with that guy. If any of you know what could have happened where the screen got all left up and maybe there's a way to fix that, just let me know. Maybe I can find Classy again and give him a good old spit shine, even though he ascended into some kind of afterlife realm. I'm probably not going to find him. <laughs> uh, oh, well, that would be a good plot for like a Hollywood film of Crazy Ken, right? Yeah, let's get that green lit. So anyway, today was definitely a loss. Yeah, didn't did not expect that to happen. Honestly, when I started documenting this, I thought it was just going to be a quick motherboard swap. I honestly didn't think it would work but I didn't think it would not work like this. <laughs> so that's what was really weird. So it was still fun. Had a lot of good memories with that computer. So I have more stuff coming. Thanks for sticking with me. Catch the crazy and pass it on.